You know, in the world of doing interviews, every once in a while you get, uh, you find out who you're going to be interviewing and you say, oh my God, how did we get this guy? Uh, and uh, today is such a case. Uh, welcome to the conversation. I'm Michael Shore. And my guest today, John Pedarola. <laughs> John. How's it going? I'm excited to have you here. It's going well. I'm, you know, I, I am uh, always excited to see you, but this is uh, a project that we're talking about that was very dear to you and was a, because I remember when you came back, a life-changing experience uh, and a once-in-a-lifetime, presumably, experience for you. In 2018, you went north. You went to the Arctic and you got up close and personal uh, with the effects of climate change, but also why we are so concerned about climate change. Two years on, uh, when you look back at that trip, and we're going to talk about True North, the series uh, that, that you that you contributed for there and, and you hosted, tell me a little bit about how it is looking back two years later now, not immediately after. Um, it, it was definitely unique. And uh, I, I overall, my impression is looking back on it after several years. I believe it was actually fall of 2017. Um, so I've had even more time to sort of, you know, think about it. Um, it doesn't feel like it happened almost like uh, at the time it was such a big thing. It was your whole life for literally months. And uh, you know, looking back, it's just, it seems like I saw a movie where it happened to someone and uh, watching the first episode again, because it's now rerunning and, and one is already out. I was sort of reminded, oh wait, yeah, I was there. I was in that ghost town. I walked past that building. I saw that Fox. Um, yeah, and and I can't wait to see the episodes, you know, of me on the the, the sealing vessel with the climate change uh, researchers. Uh, it, it's going to be like sort of discovering it again for the first time because it's been it's been literally years since I or basically anyone has been able to see it. Whether you're going to Yonkers, New York, or you're going mm -hmm. to the north, uh, you have a preconceived notion of what it's going to be like. What was shattered for you? What did you think? And what was surprised? I don't mean shattered in a bad way. Like what, what was a, a surprise for you and, and, and changed your thinking going in from going in? Huh. Um, I mean, one thing is I, I thought, I think rightly that it was going to be difficult, like physically um, and in terms of you know safety. We, we, we went to Germany to do training for the part that would be on the ocean and dealing with different animals and things like that. And so I knew that that all of that would be difficult. But I didn't get that filming a docu-series like this would be as much work as it was. The, the sheer number of hours, and obviously, I being the host, that means that I had literally the easiest job out of everyone on the team. The actual, like the director and cinematographer, they were doing far more than me. But even the tiny version of it that I had, it was a lot of work and under difficult circumstances where you are away from your life for a long time. Um, that was a novel experience back then. Now everyone is experiencing their entire life shutting down, but even being away from civilization for literally weeks when I was off on the ship and had almost no contact with the outside world, it was a lot. And not just in terms of, you know, trying to you know stay alive, be comfortable, all of that, but it was a lot of work too. And uh, that made it an even more, I guess, a valuable experience to, to have done. So when you go on trips like that and you have experience, there are some experiences that come in to every life that are really difficult to articulate when you come back, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to describe something you saw. What is that that one driving thing that you wanted to share about this that was maybe more difficult to talk about then, but now it feels so important and something that you really want to talk about about it? Um, so, so I know what it is, but I'll say first, I, I will never be able to articulate how bad the seasickness was for one period on that ship. You tell people, you know, how far up and down the ship was moving or the way, and they don't get it. They've been on a ship, so they think they get seasickness, but they don't know what this ship was like. Right. But that wasn't it. Um, no, the actual experience was um, the most scared that I've ever been in my life was uh, the night that I did guard duty against polar bears. And uh, now I look back and I think, ah, you were fine. Nothing was probably going to happen. But at the time, when you're the only person uh, awake, the only thing you have to defend yourself is a flashlight. And, uh, and you've been spending the past couple of months watching videos of polar bears literally hunting, like cleverly hunting prey, hiding and then striking. Um, it was terrifying in a way that I think we did the best job possible uh, in, in the episode about that, that trip where we went onto a glacier. Uh, I think we did as good of a job as we can of articulating that, but I, I don't know that it actually can get across the experience that I can only sort of dimly remember having. But I know at the time that was the mo most scared I've ever been in my life. Wow. I mean, and, and you talk about 
fear being being one of the emotions you felt pretty profoundly during this trip. Um, it, it, were you prepared for that? I mean, did some did they was that a surprise? Oh, John, by the way, you're going to be on watch tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I didn't know when I didn't know that I would be doing. I mean, I knew like a day or two before, but when I did the trip, I didn't know that. Um, I also didn't know that when we went to camp that night. Uh, we would get off of the little like boat. So we had the the big boat. We had a little boat that took us to the shore, and uh, you know we we pulled a little like rowboat effectively um, onto the shore, and then we're like, okay, we're gonna camp over there. And between the boat and there is maybe ten yards and one massive track of polar bear tracks going across. So the camp was was right, you know, it was a couple feet away from polar bear tracks and the polar bear tracks were just a couple of feet away from the water and so in high tide they would be destroyed which means they were pretty fresh right. so that <laughs> surprised me yeah uh so uh, tell me a little bit about what you want people to take away from this like what is mm -hmm. the lesson or the the experience that you most want to share for people to take away from and be inspired by so the entire show is not just about climate change. We talk about a lot of different things. Many of them are related to climate change. But what I would want them to take away is um, being able to see the experience of being embedded with these climate researchers on the vessel that I was on for several weeks, seeing what their, their life and their research is actually like, seeing them talk about their work, and just the, the sheer, sometimes frustrating humility and caution they used when speaking about these things, I, I think that it just destroys the idea that these climate scientists are some, they're just like, they're being paid to lie about this hoax of climate change. They're, they're fear mongering, they're hysterical. No, they're the exact opposite, uh, opposite of that. And so I hope that people take that away. And also I, I want them to just see the beauty of this part of the world that almost no one will see. And to see us talk to locals there, talk about how much it's changed just in the past few years, how rapidly the change is happening, that we got to see a place that if we go back in 20 years, it won't look the same at that point. And it might never look that way again. And so I want them to get a picture of the pe people who are working to stop climate change and for us to understand it, but also to see what is already happening in the world. It might not be in our backyard, although many, in many ways it is, but other areas are being devastated too. Right. Is there a fact that you that blew you away, that still blows you away, that you learned when you were there? Interesting. Uh, I mean, probably several. I mean, one, the fact that we 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 um, we stayed for a time in a little settlement called Longyearbyen, which is basically the northernmost place that people live, and uh, they have you know they have students and researchers that'll go there. And um, they have had a difficulty in housing these people because many of the newer apartments they've built, thanks to climate change eroding the ground, they've collapsed or been destroyed um, by land, like, uh, like earth slides, mud slides, and things like that. And so in this area where they're going, uh, many of them, to try to learn more about climate change, they're finding it difficult to do that because climate change is making it inhospitable for them to just do their work there. It's literally destroying the buildings out from under them. It's, amazing. it's an amazing thing. I mean, what from what you experience, and, and you're you know, a layperson when it comes to this, but the notion, right, that, that you can even do a nature show without it being about climate change anymore. I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. over with now, right? I mean, it's impossible to do that without talking about this issue. Yeah, I, I well, it would it would be highly irresponsible uh, at the very least. But it was look, it was a show about the climate, but it was also a show about you know, um, it was about ecology, it was about animal species, how they've been affected. We we talked about you know some things like whaling and things like that, how it's affected all these different species. But we also talked about resource extraction, which is obviously related to climate change, but also causes its own problems. We talked about some of the the political conflict that's led to both in the present and in the past as well. All of these things are related, and and I hope that in the same way that I think many people communicating about these issues in politics and media and hopefully in, you know, in films and entertainment and documentaries as well, that when we talk about these things, we have to do a better job of relating them, of, of talking about them not as singular issues that we need to worry about, but as part of a web of issues that need to be understood together and also need to be uh, responded to, dealt with together. Yeah, and that's what you're, you're, you know, with True North, that's what you're trying to do, to relate these stories and, and your experiences that were so unique. And like you said, you may be going back, but, you know, to most people, this is something that they're going to have to look at through your eyes. Tell me, how do people watch this, John? 
Um, well, uh, what you can do is uh, um, new episodes are being released Mondays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, this was starting on April 20th. So one episode is out. And uh, while new episodes come out on Monday, is they're going to replay throughout the week. They're available on Pluto TV, Roku, Comcast, Xfinity X1, and Flex, Zumo, and YouTube TV. You're seeing it there. So you can watch the new episodes each Monday, and then you can watch the replays uh, throughout the week after that. And so if you want to catch the first one, you have tomorrow and the next day to do that. And uh, with these things, you never know where they're going to end up. So feel free to record the episodes for later viewing as well. All right. It, it sounds good, John. I mean, it's uh, it's an exciting thing to be able to share your experience uh, with so many people. And uh, I look forward to watching it. And John, I thank, thank you for making time for the Young Turks. Thank you. Like what you see, click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.